Good morning. The month has changed, but we are not any less busy than we were last month. Um, today is Noisy Offering, so during the children's time, we'll be doing that collection. Next Sunday is God's Work, Our Hands Outreach. There are several different um, things listed in here that you can participate in. Um, uh, Fire Department, John's a point of contact person, the Helping Hands Food Pantry, that is uh, being in, Kathy Baldner in charge of that, and Joyce Rohrball, Rohrball is in charge of the church kitchen cleaning, and also we have uh, Donate to the Homeless Outreach Program here, and there's a list of those items needed in your bulletin. Please look at those. St. John Bell Choir, there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex for those interested. The rehearsals will start on Wednesday, yeah. September 21st at 6 o'clock. And uh, we need some seasoned and also new ringers are welcome. The uh, Lutheran Rural Relief Kits are being collected. And there's boxes out here in the narthex for those. There's a list of the things necessary for them on the back of your bulletin to put those together. And the deadline is the end of this month. The elevator is not yet working. They're still in the process of getting repairs necessary. And in your bulletin, you will also find uh, helping those in needs list for the homeless and for the food pantries. Please look at those lists and give as you are directed by your own conscience. There's a complete list in your announcements. Uh, there's evening prayers, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And four weeks from today is a crop walk. And there will be further news on that coming along as we go along. Is there anything that I've missed that needs to be brought up?
Good morning, St. John Lutheran Church. It is good to be with all of you this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for joining with us live on Facebook Live, FM Radio, and here at St. John Lutheran Church here in Mixino, Ohio. I have a couple additional announcements before we start worship this morning on my end. One next Sunday, please take note as part of our God's Work, Our Hand Sunday, there will still be online worship available. A pre-recorded service will be available, so um, you can view that at any point of the day after you are doing uh, dumb serving in the community with whatever project you are um, participating in. And then September 18th will be my last Sunday with you all. I have prayed for the day for you all to get a new pastor. And that day has come. Pastor Jeff has accepted the call here to St. John Lutheran Church. Can we get an amen? Amen. I told you the spirit works, and so it has, and I am joyful for you as your interim pastor. Please treat him with the grace and compassion you have shared with him and with his family as you have done with Matt, Elizabeth, and myself. So that will be the farewell and Godspeed service. Um, so please get that word out. That will be September 18th. Please note if you have any pastoral emergencies between now and September 30th, you can still call my cell phone and I will respond to pastoral emergencies. Um, but we are gonna have one week with no, no pastor here um, as far as the Sunday service goes. So. Please take note of all that. Also for the service today, children's time will be right after the prayer of the day. So we will invite the kids to come forward for a message and then noisy offering will be at that time. And then after the service, we will have our semi-annual congregational meeting. Right, John? So those of you who are voting members, please don't take off. It will be very short. It won't be too long. um, But please stay seated uh, for that as well. With that, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us stand now for the confession and forgiveness found in your bulletins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed on by the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, hymn 509 in your green hymnals, verses 1 and 4.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue to carry a. your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The children may come forward. Are you wanting Good morning, all. How are you? Hi. Have you had a good week? Yeah? What has been the highlight of your week so far? Getting away from the city. Getting away from the city. <laughs> And Cedar Point, I heard. Did you go to Cedar Point here? No. no? Hi. Okay. Elizabeth, do you have a highlight this week? You're going to school on Tuesday, right? Praise God. <laughs> What's that? You started school on Wednesday? I Those of you who have not met, this is my daughter, Elizabeth. Very outgoing. Um, so I'm going to ask you all, the first thing we always say, thank you, Jesus, for bringing us to a new day. So can we say thank you, Jesus? And then can we say thank you to the adults who brought us here today? Say thank you. Can you say thank you, Elizabeth? There you go. Thank you. 
So I have a question for you. If I asked you to make a couple choices, if I said, do you like ice cream or cookies, what would you say? Cookies? Cookies and cream ice cream. Good. Put them together. Why? Why is it there? Go ahead and take her downstairs. Um, what if I said Pittsburgh Steelers or Cleveland Browns? Steelers. What if I said, do you like rainy days or sunny days? Sunny days. You jump and run? Okay. So maybe both. Maybe I'll give you a choice C there. Both. Rainbows. There you go. Let me ask you one more, a couple more questions really quick. If you had the choice of doing the most funnest activity you could do or stay back and help a friend, what would you do? Help a friend? Well, Okay, okay. What if it was a stranger? Would you help a stranger too? No. no? Stranger danger, okay. That's a valid point. I need to answer not wearing a mask and also Uh huh, okay. And let me ask you this Why did you come to church today? To worship God? You wanted to come to church? What about you? No? <laughs> What's that? They drove you here. They drove you here. Okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you something today. Today in our scripture readings, we hear a lot about choices, right? And as you can see from the little questions I asked you, there are lots of choices we make every single day, right? You are here, whether you choose to be here or somebody chose to bring you here, <laughs> right? But the one choice Jesus has made for us is to love us unconditionally, which means he loves every single one of you. There's nothing you could do to change that. Even if you try to say, no, don't love me today, Jesus, guess what? Jesus is still going to love you. Did you know that? What do you think of that? No? You don't think that's a good thing? I think it's a great thing. I <laughs> think it's a good thing? Okay. And so that is a choice Jesus makes on our behalf that God has made in Jesus Christ for each one of us here, for all these people here. And that no matter, even on the days when we say, ah, oh, I'm not so sure today, Jesus, God loves us as his children and forgives us and sends us forth to serve. He's still going to love us. Exactly. And so, even with my squirmy child over here, <laughs> God, and it's because of that love, we are able to go make choices also to help other people and to show that love of God to other folks in our lives, right? By being kind and caring and helping one another. Elizabeth's going to say bye-bye, all. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> She's done. Um, so let us, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to have the noisy offering. So let us pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thank you, God for choosing to love us in Jesus Christ. Thank you for these children that you love as your own, for the unbounding seeds of faith that grow and are nurtured in them. Thank you for bringing us here. And thank you for all the family and friends who love and support these kids. Watch over them with your Holy Spirit. Keep them safe as they go forth and um, to school and to home and all the other activities that they do, that you, your love in them may grow and that they would share that love of Jesus Christ with their neighbors. 
We pray all these things, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you all run. Today is noisy offering. So the adults, if you have spare change, this will be the time to go ahead and... We continue with scripture readings. The Old Testament reading today comes from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 to 20. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, then I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God and walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish, and you shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to you, to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The New Testament reading comes from Philemon, chapter 1, verses 1 through 21. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Apphia, our sister, to Archippus, our, bro our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I, will, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may 
become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother. Especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. See, if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way and owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confidence of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Will you bow your heads in prayer with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. There I was, standing on the hillside of Robin Hill Park. I had my big Siberian Husky German Shepherd dog named Thumper. Some of you knew Thumper. And I stand on this hillside and there are three trees with three dots, red, orange, Blue. 
he already knows what I'm going to say before I say it. I had to pick which one of those trails I was going to follow that day. And as I'm contemplating, because there's no signs about how long each trail is, my dog decides to go find a pile of deer poo and roll in it. Well, I'm not paying attention. So now I have a smelly Siberian Husky Shepherd dog. And I have hot heat and humidity. So I decide to go with the blue trail. Whoever said that over on this side? Good job. I made that choice. That day I walked six miles, <clears throat> sprained my ankle along the way. It was a very memorable walk <laughs> and hike through the woods. Yes, I got my exercise, but not without little bang ups along the way. But I thought about that today as a metaphor for our scripture readings this morning. Because every single day, you and I make choices, right? And we make decisions. And those decisions and choices have real life consequences that we have to take responsibility for. At other times, we are the recipients of other people's decisions beyond our control, right? And the choices we make, whether we realize it or not, have long-term consequences, not just for where we are right now, but for future generations to come, right? In light of these scripture readings we hear this 13th Sunday after Pentecost, I want us to think about a couple questions as we hear these readings and hear the sermon this morning. What difference does our faith in Jesus Christ make in our lives when we make choices individually and communally as the body of Christ? Do the choices we make in our lives choose life and building up the body of Christ? Or do our choices lead to consequences of tearing down the body of Christ and, in essence, choose death? How does taking up the cross and following Christ as a disciple look like in the world? And what is holding us back from following Jesus Christ as we make our own life decisions, right? Because we've all had our stumbling blocks at some point of our lives here. We've all struggled with it. What are the costs when this happens? And what are the benefits of following Jesus Christ and making Christ at the center of our decisions as we make them every day? And how does our faith in Christ shape us to realize that the impact of our choices have a legacy of consequences for past, present, and future generations of the world to come? And do we take responsibility for our choices? Can I get an amen on that one? I don't know about any of you, but <laughs> when my friends always come, from college, we always joke about, we feel like the, the R word, responsibility, has become this dirty word in our culture, right? Take responsibility for what we do or don't do. In our first reading from today in Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20, we hear, choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob. Now, that seems pretty straightforward, right? Love God, obey God. How hard can that be? 
Anyone? Harder than you think, <laughs> right, if you're a human being. As we all know, it is not straightforward for us as human beings. Look at Moses who gives this today in Deuteronomy. Moses who was a leader, right, who led God's people out of Egypt from slavery. What's the first thing the people say? Why did you bring us here? <laughs> we liked it back in Egypt. You're bringing us out to die. And then while Moses is up on the mountain, what else do they go ahead and do? Let's build that good old golden calf, right? Build that idol up. Look how well that worked, right? God was like, okay, you go do that. There's 40 years in the wilderness. Have fun out there. The old Adam in us thrives on disobedience and individualism to go our own way. And even though we know over and over again the consequences of such choices are not good for us or for other people, we do it again anyway. It's kind of like what I used to say, our, our dog, going back to our dog, our dog, um, she was a rescue pup. We got her from a kennel in Pittsburgh, a rescue league there. And before we got her, um, she lived her life out in the streets. And so she learned to eat out of garbage cans and other scraps. And so she knew that wasn't good for her, right? But what would happen the first couple of years we had her? I'd like go off somewhere, I'd come back home, and what would I find? The garbage can tipped over, <laughs> garbage spread all over the place, scraps eaten, get sick, repeat the cycle, right? But there's something key in this verse 19 of Deuteronomy 30. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. The promise of a life in God promises a life and a desire for life for God's people. And it's not just for the past and present generations, it's for future generations to come after. For people who are not here yet. It's for the world that will be long after our generations. And that's challenging for us, right? We're, we were at Labor Day weekend, right? The United States, we like to thrive on our successes, right? Work harder. I say work smarter, not harder. But sometimes I wonder, do we think about the consequences of the future? We have these kids right here sitting among us and young adults. What's gonna be for their futures, right? We as a country have no problem borrowing more money. The national debt keeps going up, right? Or we look at climate, our climate right now, choices we make, right, affect that. Who will get to clean that all up after we're gone? God desires life for his people, not death. It's not what God desires. Death is not what God desires for us. Through Moses, the Lord makes it clear, choose life for you, for your ancestors, the generations that come after you, for the world and God's creation. Choose life and not death. Now, you might say, well, that's great, Moses. Thank you for this unattainable goal, <laughs> right? <laughs> if we read this strictly through a lens of the law, it might seem too overwhelming, all the stumbling blocks that get in the way, that we can never do this. And that simply we're just doomed to choose death. But if we take the words of Moses and God's desire for us to choose life in Deuteronomy 30, 
and then connect that to our gospel reading from Luke 14 today. That's where being a follower of Jesus Christ and having the power of the Holy Spirit in us to trust the promise fulfilled in Christ makes all the difference for us as students and followers of Jesus Christ in the Christian faith. Where the secular world teaches us that the choice between life and death is strictly an individual choice based on individual needs. A life lived in Jesus Christ points us back to the cross and resurrection and puts us squarely in the complete opposite of what the secular world teaches us as its ideals of power, greed, individualism that seeks out one's own priorities or agendas. The cross of Jesus Christ points us back to community with one another. Communion with God, communion with your neighbors. And that sense of belonging to one another. Again, it's like what I do affects you, which affects you, which affects all of us, which affects the greater world. Think of it like a chain link, right, in that regard. That there is a bigger world than all of us individually in it, and that Christ is the embodiment of God's love, which in turn enables us, because God chooses life for us in Jesus Christ, than to choose life for others, for our neighbors, past, present, and future generations to come. And then more importantly for us as followers of Jesus Christ, choosing life means choosing Jesus Christ and the way of the cross and resurrection. Now, I always get questions about, Jesus didn't really mean to hate your family, right? <laughs> I mean, if you just hear that literally, that sounds pretty harsh. But what he's trying to tell these folks here, it's about a detachment, right? Don't let your family relationship supersede your relationship with Christ. Do not let all your other relationships supersede your relationship with God. Do not get distracted or tempted along the way and miss God who chooses life in Christ, who now sends us forth with the Holy Spirit to bring life to others. Because discipleship costs something, but the benefit is everlasting and eternal. Choosing a life in Christ and picking up the cross and following Christ is not for the faint-hearted, because it confronts us with all the death choices we make over and over again. And while God meets us where we are, God does not leave us as we are. There will be tough spots along the way in our faith that our current generations will face, just as our past generations have faced, just as future generations will face but Christ is present with it, all of them. And I think that's the church that the gift the church has to offer the world in the present generation and future generations to come because we have the opportunity to be the embodiment of living into the good news of Jesus Christ and to share that abundant grace, mercy, love, and forgiveness that chooses life in Christ and life for our neighbors in the present and future generations to come and so as we read the gospel reading for today in Luke, what do our relationships in life look like through the lens or perspective of choosing a life lived in Christ as we embody God's love and forgiveness with our neighbors? What choices are we making with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to choose life for present and future generations of God's people in the world? And when we make choices that choose death, do we also take responsibility for those? Right? 
Like, if I mess something up, I need to own that, right? Whether it's my relationship with another neighbor, whether it's my relationship with God's creation, right? How do we take responsibility and choose a different path that leads to life? This call to discipleship puts us face to face with these questions. Does this cost more than I'm willing to pay or be able to pay? And I think the thing that's always challenging in our call to discipleship, ask, ask the churches in Revelation. There's a couple of them that were real enthusiastic about Jesus at first. And then it got hard. Right? And what happened there? They fell away. It's easy to make a commitment to Christ and be enthusiastic at the beginning. But are we willing to sign on for the cost? Right? As I told you all weeks ago, even in my own family, becoming a Christian, becoming a pastor... Becoming a Christian was one thing, and then saying I was going to serve God. (laughs) I lost some relationships over that, right? I still love them, but my loyalty and commitment was to to Christ. And let's face it, if you look around the world right now, we have a lot of choices going on right now. (laughs) Hard choices. For Jesus, choosing life first means choosing obedience to his Father and facing his own suffering and death. It would seem that death has the final say based on the choice of death made by human beings. But for death, for God, death is transformed into eternal life and does not get the final say. For in Christ, the love of God is greater than the loyalties and allegiances and powers of humanity. This choice God makes on our behalf in Christ to choose life is a choice that has everlasting consequences for us who follow Christ. And now Christ invites us into a life of faith that is centered in him. So we too may be the embodiment of Christ's love, mercy, grace, compassion for our neighbors and world and to make choices that choose life not just in the present, but also in the future generations to come. And for all this, we give thanks to God and Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's take a moment of silence to reflect on God's holy word. I invite you to the hymn of day, hymn 494 in your Lutheran Book of Worship, hymn 494, verses 1, 3, and 5. Please stand.
profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation, responding, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church around the world and for the mission of the gospel. Refresh the hearts of your people, deepen our understanding of every good thing we share, and strengthen our partnerships in the faith. This morning, we give thanks for the World Council of Churches that is gathered in Europe. We pray for unity, even amongst our differences, that all would proclaim Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, and who will come again. Lord, in your mercy. For the well-being of the, earth, of the earth and all its creatures, for trees and forest, for all that will yield fruit this season, and for streams and other bodies of water, Lord, in your mercy. For the nations and those in authority, for the elected leaders of our towns, states, and country, and for international organizations, grant wisdom to those who govern and raise up citizens who make decisions in the best interests of their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. For all in need, for those who suffer from disease, who struggle with homelessness or food insecurity, for those whose family life is difficult, and for all in this community who are in need your healing mercies, especially Courtney, Oliver, Melissa, Bruce, Will, Larry, Nancy, Margaret and Larry, Ayla, Betts, Rachel, Fran, Jackie, Paul, T.C., Gwen, Gaylord, Charlie, Richard, Lenny, Sharon and Steve, Vic and Susan, Dwayne and Pat, Betty and Larry. Lord, in your mercy. For the people of St. John Lutheran Church, as we enter this time of transition with Thanksgiving and Jesus Christ, we thank you for the ministry you call us to do together in the body of Christ and help us to be mindful of the presence of your spirit as we go forth to serve in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. For this community of faith, for all our labors, begun, continued, and ended in you, that they may glorify your holy name. Bless your people with the strength to live into many vocations for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the saints who now rest from their labors, especially Jackson and Jim. Give us faith like them to love you with all our hearts, and by your mercy bring us to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and our, all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Share the peace of Christ with one another.
pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, all is now ready. I will invite the folks in the back to come forward first as we continue with the Lamb of God.
for those of you who have your communion packets, this is the body of Christ which is given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ which is shed for you. Amen. Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face, upon, face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn, hymn 499 in our Lutheran Book of Worship. We will sing all three verses. Hymn 499. <laughs> And peace serve the Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> I got it. <laughs> 